Eucharist and bury my carnal and most acceptable church to the feast of all saints. We also welcome those of you who have joined us for the first time since we had COVID. Last weekend, it was the first time our kindergarten through sixth grade graders came back for the in person faith formation. We were so happy that many families joined us again for Mass. This weekend, our junior senior high school students will be back as well. Please keep all of our students and their families in your prayers as we navigate these new roads. We are pleased to have everyone here with us today, and we appreciate everyone's patience as you enter the church. I would like to simply remind you of this of our directives in order to keep everyone safe. These are very important. Please remember the mask must be worn at all times, must be completely cover your mouth and nose with no exceptions. There are baskets at the exit of the churches for your envelopes of donations. We are not using the needles as it is one less thing that needs to be cleaned. So you may sit for the Eucharistic prayers. When it's time for communion, Father Sesta and the ministers will come to you. When they get to your role, we ask you that you stand up and receive it, the Eucharist. Please cup your hands and receive the host. Then sit down. Once the minister has moved past you, remove your mask down, to expose your mouth and consume the host, and put your mask back up. At the end of Mass, please wait for the ushers to let you know your role can leave the church. You will hang the bell and dismiss dining with the back of the church and <coughs> the front. Please follow their directives. They will let you know which door exit as well. Please, this may take a few hours and minutes, but please be patient. Thank you for adhering to the pro protocol. Now, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Please join me in three Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, for is it. Blessed are thy God, and blessed is the fruit of thy Jesus. Holy Mary, God, pray for us sinners.
getting ready for All Saints Day tomorrow. Of course, we've made it all horrors with Halloween, especially for the kids. They like what's dangerous more than what's holy, I think, when you're little kids. So we hope everybody's safe and sound on this Halloween night, and we are celebrating the saints tonight and tomorrow. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, the love of our good Lord Jesus, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's bow our hand and this our prayer at the beginning. Almighty God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the worthiness of all the holy saints, bestow upon us, we pray, through their intercession, an abundance of pardon and peace and grace. This we earnestly seek through Christ Jesus, your beloved Son, who lives with you, Father, together with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's listen to God's word at the Feast of All Saints. A reading of the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, groups, people, and tongues. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. And the angels stood around the throne and around the elders of the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these white robes? Where are you, these white robes? And where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. And he said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
second readings from the light, the first letter of the hand. Beloved, see what the <coughs> see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so are we are. The reason the world does not know us is that he did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and we shall be what we shall be is not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope, based on him, makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. I thank you. Saint Matthew, 
And I like All Saints tonight and tomorrow because it celebrates all the saints, the little saints and the big saints, family members, people in our our story of our, of our growing up, perhaps, who we say, boy, she was a saint, he was a saint, mother, grandmother, a teacher, a priest, we know, who knows? So I like the Feast of All Saints. It tells us that really we're all called to be a saint. Now you might hear that and say, yeah, I'm right, especially the priest up there, no way, you know. <laughs> but really, it's true. Someone said that the, the goal to become a saint is there for every person of pretty good, strong faith. It's not out of our reach to become at least a little saint. There was a French priest many years ago, he said, what a sad life it would be for a person of faith to live and die, live their whole life, and never became a saint. Now what he meant by that is you would live and die your whole life and you would never become the person God really wanted you to become. In other words, there's all sadnesses in life. You didn't get the job you wanted. Somebody passed away close to you, who else? You had an injury, a health problem. There's a lot of things to be sad about. But this holy French priest said, the greatest sadness is to live your own life and never have become the person God wanted you to become. That is what it is to be a little saint. And that's within the reach of any one of us who says we have faith, young or old, whoever we are. Now, what is it to become a saint? You'd say, oh, you gotta be holy. Well, what's that mean? You gotta have a little wings and, you know, sitting around with the angels, you got a halo over your head. Not really, what is to be holy? To be holy is to follow God's will which isn't easy, but we chip away with it, to be the kind of person of faith. Now, people who have no faith could care less about what I'm talking about. But for the person of faith, to be holy just means to try and follow God's will. What is God's will? God's will is that we love because God is love. And how you love, you will the good for the other person. Love is the ability, the desire to will the good for the other and not just worry about me all the time. So it's not a difficult formula to be holy and that means it's within our reach to be a little saint in our ordinary living. To be a saint means to follow God's will. What is God's will? That we love as God loves. How do you love? You hope and work for and you will the good of the other person, those that you know, people in need, so on and so forth. We talk about it all the time. That's to love as God loves. So our gospel for the Feast of Paul Saints gives a wonderful recipe, formula, that helps us to become a little saint. There's four of those four of the Beatitudes, and Beatitude from the Latin Beatitudo means how to be happy. There's four of them that help us to become saved. The first one is be merciful. Well, what's that mean? You wish the good for the other person. Sometimes that means you give them a break, a second chance, show them a little mercy. You forgive them, even though you don't feel like it. The other, the attitude, is to be clean of heart. Well, what does that mean? To be pure, never think about anything that's dirty? <laughs> well, guess what? We gotta be put up with that our whole life. Can't help it. It just happens. To be clean of heart means that your heart is undivided. It's able to be focused on being the person God calls you to be. And you can't do that if your heart if your intentions are divided. One day you're this kind of person, another day you're that kind of person. When you're in church, you're one kind of person. When you get out there you make a week, you're another kind of person. Then you're divided, you see? But that the attitude, be clean of heart, means that your heart is, is undivided. It can be focused on what is good. 
be merciful, blessed and a clean of heart, and how about thirst and hunger for things that are right and good? How much time and energy do people spend hungry, thirsty for things that aren't too good or righteous, things that are sinful, harmful, hurtful, bad to the person or to other people? So to simply follow that beautiful beatitude, to try and hunger, to thirst for what is right and good most of the time. That's great. Makes you a good person. And the fourth one, the fourth one is to be a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called God's children. Well, if you show mercy to others, give people a break. Don't be out to get anybody, to get even all the time. If you're kind of clean of heart, undivided in your desire to follow God's will, if you're that kind of person, you're going to produce peace all around you. You'll be the person that people say at the end of your life, you know what, everybody wanted him or her as part of their life. They were a peacemaker. They weren't a troublemaker. We're going to miss them. We're not going to miss that guy. He never brought peace. He brought trouble wherever he went. So four of those Beatitudes are part of the recipe, the formula, to become a saint in our ordinary living. It's not out of our reach. So I don't know about you, but I would like to be counted in that number on that day when the saints come marching in. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's together profess our Apostles' Creed, everybody. I believe in God, the Father, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the much of God, was crucified, died, and died in the air. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the universe of the mountain, I was living in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Christ. Amen. As we stand here and struggle day by day, to become a holy person, a saintly people, so we also place our prayers and our intentions, our hopes before the Lord. Please respond and receive our prayer, O oh God, for a greater unity in the church of Mother Pope Francis. May men, women, and children from every land, race, and culture, rich, poor, powerful, and powerless, be joined together as one body of faith service and witness, faithful to holy leadership provided by Pope Francis, we ask. To see our prayer. For blessings upon all world leaders and those we will elect in our country, may all government leaders recognize the dignity of all people as children of God. May they work together across aisles and borders towards the common good, we ask. Receive our May our Lord be inspired with vision. May the saints of our faith and tradition, along with our world, be loved to cease to love and let us in faith, inspire us to live with gospel values, and to work hard to bring justice and peace to the, our world. We ask. Receive our Provide hope for the persecuted, courage for peace. <laughs> Comfort for those who mourn, strength for the meek, the merciful, and the poor in spirit, and guide us through our struggles with prejudice, addiction, and the demands of this pandemic. We ask <laughs> for our beloved the deceased who we celebrate during this month of remembrance. May our relationship with them strengthened through our prayer and faith. May they inspire us with wisdom, courage, and direction, we ask. Receive our prayer. For our 
own intentions and for all, all who need our prayers at this time. We ask, receive our prayer. Lord, in these early days of November, as we celebrate the saints and pray for our beloved all souls, keep us all connected in communion with each other. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
and you have created all things, and they give you praise. And you have created all things through Christ Jesus, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Lord, we beg that you send that same Spirit graciously, that you bless and consecrate these gifts that we bring to this sacred altar, and that they become for us the very body and blood of the risen Lord Jesus. Now on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and giving thanks, Father, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and giving it then to the disciples, he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Of our 
Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the You said, Lord, to your apostles who walked with you, you said to them, Peace is the gift I give to you. Mark not our faults, but see our faith, especially as we are the saints. Grant to us the peace and the joy of the kingdom where you are Lord forever. And Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace.
Well, some of you for many years said you would never dress up for Halloween, but here you, you all have a mask on. <laughs> Funny how things work out. <laughs> Bring home, get your parish bulletin, a lot of good items in it. Thanks for those who are chipping in for our home field this autumn, this fall season. Anything is most welcome to chip away at our, our goal for the Hope Appeal. And uh, now the other day at the Daily Mass, I shared it with the folks who come in the morning. I said, uh, somebody asked me if I ever met a real saint, you know, a canonized saint, a real, I mean, one of the real official saints. I said, well, I did, I did meet two of them. I, I shook hands with Saint John Paul II, our Polish Pope for 26 years. I shook hands with him twice while I was living in Rome and Italy, and twice I was in a mass in his chapel. So I shook hands, there's one official saint that touched me, and another time she was on her way into St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York, and I briefly, you know, just kind of shook hands with Mother Teresa, who of course now is a saint. And then and they said, has any other mother saint ever touched you? And I said, yeah, when I was a kid, my mother would grab me by both ears and pull me up and say, sit at the table, you know? <laughs> she was a saint. <laughs> so let's stand for our prayer, everyone. We worship you, Almighty God, for you alone are holy and made wonderful in the lives of all the saints who we celebrate and honor. And coming to a perfect holiness, may we fulfill your love in our lives as we pass from this pilgrim's table to the banquet of heaven. And now the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in every way, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our eyes ascend and we Thank you.